uh, I'll quickly just go through the slides. Sorry, one second. So um, what I'll do is um, I'll give you a brief uh, into the, uh, sort of a brief overview of the, of the upcoming lectures also before I introduce the main speakers, Murad and Hossam, who will be talking about meta research of COVID-19 literature. So uh, I will not go through the upcoming lectures in, you know, in a lot of detail. I went through that last time, but just to, um, we'll go, to, you know, just, just an overview. But before that, let me uh, briefly mention about the house rules. Uh, so, as soon as you join, uh, all the attendees, when they join the web uh, the webcast, they are automatically put on mute and only the host can unmute them. Uh, uh, so, uh, so what we are encouraging is you to ask questions by typing them in the uh, Q&A box, box uh, in the Q&A window. And uh, periodically, uh, the session chair uh, will ask the speaker to pause, in this case myself, and ask them to answer some questions. Okay. And at the end of the talks, uh, the two talks, the speaker will stay, ba stay back and take more, more questions. We, are re we really encourage you to make this as interactive as possible. So please do ask your questions. Last time we had uh, over 100 questions and we tried to answer as many possible as, as we could. And uh, we'll do the same this time. Uh, so uh, just to give you an overview of the lectures. So last week we had uh, a presentation by Nan Tang and Amin Sadegi on data visualization and exploration of COVID-19 data. Um, uh, that, you know, if you, if you missed the lecture, the video is available now and you can go online to see the video. Uh, so, and today will be the lecture on meta review of COVID-19 literature. I'll come back to it a little bit later. Uh, uh, on, on Monday, uh, it'll be uh, uh, on managing health service uh, during a pandemic. As you can, you can imagine, there's a big uh, need for uh, managing health service services efficiently during these times. Uh, and on May 7th, again, there'll be a, a, a modeling lecture, you know, how people make forecasts uh, about epidemics and pandemics. What are the underlying computational models, the mathematical models that underpin uh, this work? Uh, following that, we will have a, sort of a very unique uh, data-driven and AI perspective on drug discovery. We are, it's in the news every day. How potential uh, how potential existing how potentially existing drugs can be used uh, uh, for covid-19 and uh, we will have a machine learning perspective on that uh, you know this is the first pandemic which is uh, you know in the in the information age in some sense and social media has played a huge role in that uh, so i think uh, so on, uh, on may 14th we will have a lecture on the impact of social media on COVID-19 and sometimes they call the infodemic. And finally, on May 18th, we will have a, a, a panel uh, which will basically uh, summarize and have, have people have thoughts about, uh, about the current events. So uh, today, uh, today now, uh, we will have, uh, uh, so yeah, so that's what I, so today's lecture is on meta research of COVID-19 literature. Uh, uh, this will be presented by Dr. Murad Ozani, who is a, is a principal scientist at QCRI. Uh, he's widely, he's worldwide known for his research in database management, and he co-leads the Ryan project. And Hossam Hamadi, who's a senior software engineer in QCRI, and also leads the, uh, the, the Ryan development. So the way this will be uh, uh, organized is that Dr. Murad will speak for around 45 minutes, 40 to 45 minutes. Uh, again, I encourage you to ask questions. And followed by, uh, by uh, after that will be Dr. Um, Hossam will uh, give a demo of the Ryan system for around 30 minutes. And then both will stay back and then take parts in a part in a Q&A session. So um, I'll just hand it over to uh, Murad who will uh, now, uh, you know, talk about meta research of COVID-19 literature. Murad, over to you. Okay. Thank you, Sanjay, for the introduction. Uh, Salam alaikum, everyone. Good morning. 
It's a, it's a pleasure for me to be here and to uh, tell you more about the things we have been doing uh, with the, uh, Ryan and how this can help in the current uh, crisis, especially for when it comes to the meta review of the COVID-19 literature. I just need to have the, my screen. Let me share my screen. Okay. Is it okay? Yes. Okay. So today, so as I said, so I talk about the Ryan Systematic Review Platform and how the uh, it can help in the meta research of the uh, COVID-19 literature. So as uh, uh, Sanjay mentioned, so this will be uh, presented myself, Murad Uzani, and then Hussein. So these are uh, uh, the current team. So we have father. Abu, Abu Bakr, he's a software engineer, and uh, Ahmed al who is our executive director, he's part of this project as well, as well as uh, Hussein and myself. But we also have been, uh, had the pleasure to have worked with many people before. So these are some of the past member contributors that you see at the bottom. So we have Zibis, uh, Zibis Vidoric, so he's in the attendees. So he, he's one of, he's like a, a systematic review expert. He helped us uh, understand the domain and uh, how this kind of things work. But we also had a lot of students coming to help in Ryan as well as uh, current and former members of the QCRI uh, team. So the agenda will be as follows. So we'll have two parts, as uh, I mentioned. So in the first part, I explain the need for a literary review, why you need to do a literary review when you have I mean, given a question. And uh, then I will go in, uh, delve into how do you deal with a large amount of scientific article and scientific literature and data, and how Ryan can, uh, uh, can come to the rescue and help you with all its uh, features. For the question answer, I think, uh, based on what uh, Sanjay uh, said, so we'll just leave it at the end. At the, I was thinking we could do uh, part one first, so, and then part two, but we can decide uh, as, as we go. And uh, as Sanjay mentioned, in the part two of this uh, lecture, Sam will tell, uh, we walk us through the uh, Ryan system. So if you are interested to know how really uh, Ryan works, so you, you should stay in the, for the second part of the lecture. So let's, uh, let's get started with part one. So what this is, where this whole thing starts. So how does it start? Of course, as in any scientific endeavor, it starts with question. Okay, so you have a question, you have a topic in mind, and you want to search research that topic. Here I put like three questions that are very uh, uh, relevant to the COVID-19. And these are real questions that people have asked. The first one is, do hydroxychloroquine and chloroquine really work for COVID-19? The second question is, how are healthcare workers dealing with the outbreak in terms of their mental health? And the last question is, do school closures really help? So these are questions, and then you can have many, many, many other uh, questions, either related to COVID-19 or other topics, right? This is how you start. And then let's go through directly to the answer to this question as made by specific people. So the, we have this, uh, for the first question, we see this answer, so it says that this study, so someone did something, a, a group of people, and let you uh, later know who those people are. So they identified two clinical uh, studies with, uh, which had uh, data, and they said with limited methodological quality, that evaluated the effect of hydro, uh, hydroxychloroquine for COVID-19 infection. And then they said, based on the findings of these two studies, the efficacy and safety of hydrochloroquine and chloroquine in patients with COVID-19 is still uncertain. In part, it is very low evidence and certainty. And it's routine use for this situation should not be recommended until the result of ongoing studies could provide a proper assessment of their effect. So here you see uh, some keywords like uh, clinical studies, limited methodological quality, efficacy, safety, evidence, uh, recommended, should not be recommended in this case, and so on and so forth. These are the kind of answer that you would uh, uh, expect for this kind of question. 
just a, a, a disclaimer. So neither myself or QCR uh, endorse any of those findings. Okay. So this is we uh, uh, we uh, verbatim from those uh, uh, papers. The second question, which was about how are healthcare workers dealing with the outbreak in terms of their mental health? So it says the answer: the prevalence of anxiety, anxiety, depression, acute and post-traumatic stress disorder, and burnout was high, both during and after the outbreak. These problems not only have a long-lasting effect on the mental health of health workers, health care workers, but also hinder the urgent response to the current COVID-19 pandemic by jeopardizing attention and decision making. Then it goes on and says, in light of the limited evidence regarding the impact of interventions to tackle mental health problems in a health care worker, the risk factors identified in this study, more so when they are modifi modifiable, represent important targets for future intervention. So this was the answer again. So you see some of the highlighted uh, uh, terms like uh, risk factors, the limited evidence. And you should keep in mind those uh, words. Now, the last, uh, the, last uh, the answer to the last uh, question about the school closure. In the, uh, in the, the question was, has it really helped? for the uh, school closure. It says, there are no data on the relative contribution of school closure to transmission control. Data from the SARS outbreak in mainland China, Hong Kong, and Singapore suggests that school closure did not contribute to the control of the epidemic. And then it says, recent modeling studies of COVID-19 predict that school closures alone would prevent only two to 4% of deaths, much less than other social distancing interventions. Policymakers need to be aware of the equivocal evidence when considering school closures for COVID-19. Again, so you talk about data, about the, the uh, previous studies, about the prevalence of something like here, the death prevalence, and also evidence. The word evidence, if you have uh, paid attention, has been repeated, repeated multiple times in the uh, three studies. In fact, in each study, the, this word has been mentioned. And uh, as, uh, at the bottom of each of those uh, slides I have just shown you, there are the links for those uh, uh, studies. So these are Murat, the Murat, can I just, yeah, sure. just there, was a, there was a question, I think that's probably worth answering right now. It says, sure, yeah, of course. when we define a question in which website can we put this question? So I think that's probably uh, good to clarify. Yeah, of that. course, absolutely, yeah. The, the, so, the, so, so we are we are talking about questions that are uh, that cannot be answered by any existing system. So this is not a question that you are going to give it to a system, and the system will give you the answer. So this is a question that you do part of your job. So if you are, a, a, let's say, a medical doctor, or if you are a student researching on a specific topic, or you are working for the healthcare department in your country. So you are going to be asked those questions. And then, and this question, I mean, coming up with this question is not a straightforward process. So it depends on all many, many uh, things. Okay, so for example, I'll give you, I'll, I'll go away a little bit from uh, COVID-19. So uh, if you go to uh, your doctor, so the doctor will give you a treatment, okay? And then if you, how, how, how does the doctor really, uh, uh, get uh, to, I mean, give you the statement for a uh, for specific condition you have. So this is based on uh, guidelines. And those guidelines came from this kind of reviews. And this kind of review started with some uh, questions. So the questions are not something that you just go and ask for a system, and the system will answer those uh, questions. But in fact, if you, uh, a, a part of your study, a part of your job, you will figure out what kind of question you need to ask. So this is a uh, there is a, pro a research process that go on before even asking uh, the question, and this is what these people have done. Of course, some of the questions are just there, right? The, because uh, I mean, there is a lot of talk about, for example, about chloroquine, and these people the, and from Brazil they said, okay, let's see if we can find some evidence about their use, and they already mentioned uh, their answer. So this was published in a paper in this uh, journal from uh, Brazil. For the second question, this is still a preprint, which means it's not peer reviewed yet about the impact of uh, outbreaks on the mental health of healthcare workers. 
the last one about the school closure was uh, on uh, was a, is a peer reviewed uh, study on the in the uh, Lancet, the famous uh, uh, biomedical journal. So what I'm trying to say here is that there was a question, and this uh, 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 this is how this thing started. And pe these people went through a long process of studying this question and collecting the evidence to be able to and uh, analyzing those evidence to be able to answer this question. So how this question were answered? So that how do you answer this uh, question? The key element here is the evidence-based practice. Okay. So all you try to answer this question based on available evidence. And to do that, what you do, you have to go through a literature review. You have to collect all the review on a, your question. And then you need to identify, appraise, select, and synthesize all high-quality research evidence that is relevant to your question. And this is the, what we call evidence-based practice. This applies to medicine, but it also applies to other uh, areas of research. We have seen people in Ryan using it for environment, for engineering, and for other, other things. And uh, this, all, this is very ingrained in the practice of evidence-based medicine. Basically, the question there is, what works? Okay. What is the intervention, either, either a drug, medicine, or uh, some exercise, or some treatment? that works for a specific uh, uh, condition. And uh, usually the way you do it in evidence-based medicine, so you do, based on previous study, many randomized clinical trials, you want to show what are the interventions that have been proven to work and what remains unknown. Because sometimes your answer will be, I, we don't know. Usually the answer is either it works, it doesn't, or more evidence is required to understand what works or it. So, the, uh, the key element here that we have to keep in mind, there is a process that you go through, which is evidence-based process. The other thing that I, have, I, should have, I should mention, this kind of research is uh, meta-research, which means that you are synthesizing and analyzing previous research. You are not going to do a new clinical trial. You are not going to do a new brand new experiment in the lab, but rather you are going to collect all existing evidence, analyze them, and synthesize them. And this is a long process. Okay. And this, uh, this is, if you will, if you want to do it from uh, A to Z, this is the kind of process that you have to go through. So this is from this paper, Systematic Review Automation Technologies, by uh, uh, Glasgow and uh, on all. So the, the other shows uh, more or less the different steps that you need to go through if you want to do a review, either a systematic review, or a literature, or the, because there are many types of review, but let's say here, this is a, a, for the specific case of a systematic review. So the first thing you do is you need to formulate uh, the review question. So what is the question that you want to research? Okay. And uh, usually you don't, if the review, uh, this uh, question was reviewed before, you don't want to do it again. So you need to go and see, uh, see if there are other systematic review or literature review that have answered the same question. And then you write your protocol. What is the objective of your review? How do we make it reproducible? What is the methodology? Can you make sure that the, your method is, is uh, sound for peer review? Here, peer review means that you have to do it with multiple people. And then after that, you devise a search strategy. So basically, based on what you want, you need to decide what are the keywords that you are going to use, the queries that you are going to use to do and uh, send them to different databases. We'll go through this uh, later on. And then you do your search. And then uh, you did you pick it because sometimes the search comes with the things that are similar. And then you go through the, the thing in the black, which is the appraisal. You go through the screening. And this is a very painful part. And this is an extremely important part in this whole process. So basically what you do, based on titles and abstracts of the different studies, you want to, to uh, make sure to remove the things that are for sure not relevant. Okay? And then after that, you bring in the full text. You don't want to do this with the full text because there are too many. So you only want to bring the full text of the, uh, uh, those articles for those that are more important that you think may be relevant to your uh, uh, question. You bring in the full text and then you do again a screening based on the full text. 
And then you can do snowballing, which is basically uh, following the citation from the, those uh, different studies that you have included. You do so uh, data extraction. Now you, uh, you need to extract all the numbers from those uh, studies, and then you synthesize those data, and then you do an analysis. Okay. I go through quickly those ones. So, so what we are we care about mostly in this uh, uh, lecture and uh, what we did in IS, so we looked at this process, okay, from one, 15 steps. And we know this is a long process, and we wanted to see what are the most painful part of this process. And the black part is the one that is most painful, which is basically screening abstract and uh, screening the different studies based on titles and abstract. So let's focus more on this painful part. As I said, so you have your research question and topic. And the thing you do, you do a keyword. So you, for example, if the, for, the, for this chloroquine, you may, basically maybe your keyword will be chloroquine, high direct to uh, chloroquine, COVID-19, coronavirus, and so on and so forth. These are different keywords. Usually, if you are lucky enough, so you have access to a librarian, so he will help you or she will help you uh, get a good uh, queries based on your uh, question or research uh, topic. And then you go to different online scientific resources or databases. Uh, PubMed uh, or European C, which is a, a kind of a, a sister system for PubMed. PubMed is published by the NIH, the National Library of Medicine in the US. Web of Science and so on and so forth. There are many, many databases. Some of them are, many of them are free, but there are, some of them require a subscription. And then what happens when you do the search? You are left with thousands of results. Okay. So you get a few keywords, so you get hundreds, maybe thousands, maybe tons of results. But how do you deal with that? Because you know for sure they are not all relevant. Just to give you a perspective, if you go to the uh, European C, so they actually they prepared this uh, query for us. So in there, if you go to this link, so the link will take you to uh, one of the links in that page will take you to this page, which is a search of all literature related to uh, COVID-19. You don't have to go into the details, but just give you an idea. So for example, they put a, a different keyword here. They say 2019 NCOV or 2000 NCOV and COVID 19, SARS, Wuhan, coronavirus, or why they are trying to be uh, as uh, general as possible because they don't want to miss anything. Here, it's extremely important not to miss any study. However, by doing so, you get a lot of study. Here, I mean, in this particular search, you go to this European C uh, da uh, database, and you use this uh, the keyword they provide. So basically, you are you obtain or they return seventy eight thousand five hundred ninety seven uh, articles. Imagine dealing with that much uh, uh, that much uh, I mean that uh, much uh, article. This is not easy in any way or form. Another uh, so Murad, uh, maybe it's worth clarifying here that so this. This is not limited to, I think you mentioned it in the beginning, it's not just medical research, right? For COVID-19, you could pick, you know, the economic impact of COVID-19, the social impact, and... Uh, absolutely, yeah, this is a very good uh, question. So maybe uh, most of our examples are related to the, 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 to the medical part, to the biomedical aspect of COVID-19. However, this evidence-based practice when, and, why them, uh, and all the things that I am explaining, can be applied to any uh, topic. So as long as the, you want to collect the data, like for example, what uh, uh, Sanjay mentioned about the economic impact of COVID-19. So you, of course, you won't go to European C or to PubMed because I doubt you are going to find uh, any uh, related uh, uh, articles because most of the article in those uh, places are biomedical, uh, related to the biomedical research area. Maybe you can go to Web of Science. If you go to Web of Science, so you say, let's say you put COVID-19 or SARS-CoV-2 and so on, so on, those keywords related to COVID-19, and then you add economic impact, unemployment, uh, wages, and so on and so forth, and then you get uh, those uh, studies that have been done for this particular case. Maybe you can also do uh, uh, the environmental effect of uh, uh, pan pandemics, or, uh, pandemics and those outbreaks. So you, get, uh, you go to your uh, web of science or to your database that has 
uh, uh, papers and the research and studies about the environment, you do the same. So you say COVID-19, coronavirus, and so on and so forth, and then you add your keywords that are related to the impact of uh, the, the, to the impact of uh, uh, COVID-19 on this aspect. So economy, uh, uh, environment, uh, 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 business, mental health, bi uh, I mean, uh, biomedical and so on. So just think about any question, any question. So you go to your database, search the uh, articles of the studies that have been done on that particular uh, uh, topic, and then you go and get the data. So as I said, so going back to my presentation, this, uh, uh, this is the kind of amount of data. Here. So if you have 78,000 or more uh, data uh, studies. As another example, so there was this uh, uh, initiative from the Allen Institute with other people from different university and also by the, led by the White House in the US. What they wanted, so they wanted to also collect all articles, all studies that are related to uh, COVID-19. So they come up with this what they call the COVID-19 open research data set. And it has more than 57,000 uh, uh, articles. Again, how do you deal with those uh, 57,000 articles given your specific question that you have? When I think about this, uh, I should mention, when I think about this data set, particular data set, they, uh, they also collected all the full text. And then they divide them in different uh, subsets. So there are tons of, uh, uh, I'm not sure you can see it, but at the bottom it says like the, right now they have 47, sorry, 46,000 full text articles that you can uh, get from this uh, data set. Okay. Now, so the question though, so now, so I have, I, I have my question, like the, the, three, first, the three question I mentioned in the beginning, and I uh, went to my database and then I searched and I got thousands of uh, results and I'm sure that not all of them are relevant. I want to go through them. And also, I don't want to go through them by, by myself, or, I mean, alone. So I want some help. Okay? So how to sift through thousands of results, possibly with others? And this is the question that we answer in uh, Ryan. So we built this system called Ryan, for uh, systematic uh, reviews and for other uh, literary review. And our goal is to provide an end-to-end -end platform so we can expedite, make it faster and easier to create those kinds of research. And to, uh, as part of this, so we need to use machine learning and database and software engineering techniques that will prove to be extremely important if we want to make this system really useful and be able to help people uh, quickly go through the creation and uh, uh, of systematic review. In terms of the different uh, uh, features of uh, Ryan, so the first thing that we had to, uh, we may, uh, we, we needed to do is to come up with an intuitive user interface for screening articles. So what is the best way? So the first question uh, to build in building Ryan that we uh, needed to do is what is the best way to show the art different articles for uh, people so they can do it quickly. Okay. And uh, you will see. After uh, uh, I finish my uh, part of this uh, lecture, how we do that. So Hassan will show you how this uh, uh, user interface uh, uh, works and how it shows. The other thing that we needed to come up with is that because this is a this is a semi-automatic process. Okay? So some of the thing will be done by the machine, but some of the thing will be done by the human user, the reviewer. So we needed to add visual cues in the user interface that can help you quickly screen through the uh, tons of or thousands of articles. But something that helped us a lot is to have behind the scene machine learning algorithm mm -hmm. that will learn from your behavior, what you are doing with the system, and then based on what you do with the system, give you a recommendation. And I will go through uh, uh, this aspect a little bit uh, later. Another important thing is that we made sure that you can do it with your uh, collaborators, so multiple people can work at the same time on the same review. So we have a support for uh, collaborators, and this is an extremely important feature because most of the usually most of the reviews are done by uh, at least two people. Uh, the other thing is that we also allow for uh, uh, offline uh, screening, so you can use it on your mobile app. So they have a mobile version, and even if you don't have uh, access to the internet. 
we can, you can still uh, continue working on your uh, review and then it can sync whenever you have uh, access to the internet. At the bottom, so this is just give you a, an idea that somehow, I mean, we wrote the top before uh, look, seeing the, the bottom, but this give you an idea of the kind of things that people, our uh, users, have told us about what are the kind of features they uh, like more in Ryan. So we received like 643 responses. Of course, the first important thing is the screening, being able to say what is what should be what is relevant, what is not, and being able to uh, uh, label. And the second one is the suggestion for included, excluded. This is the machine learning uh, part that I have mentioned. And the keyword highlighting are the visual cues, and you will see them as I said later on when Hassan will uh, show, give you the. Uh, give you the, the demo. So, so Murad, yeah. this was uh, this was, of course, you know, uh, Ryan was not built for uh, COVID. It's been around for some time, right? Of course. Of course. Of course. And uh, so, also, this, when was the survey taken? This was survey was. Uh, this is uh, 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 this uh, actually this has been going on for a while. So this is uh, uh, as of uh, last week. So it has been uh, around for like two years. I see. I mean, the way we do it because we want to collect. I mean, the one of the main thing I want through this, of course, here. But the one of the main thing that this series help is, uh, is helping us is to understand what are the kind of issues and what kind of uh, things that uh, our users want to see in Ryan. But we also collect other information as well. So you're quickly you're you're getting a real time feedback almost. Uh, I mean, you're getting uh, feedback almost in real time. Yes. And uh, and again, it seems like screening is a very big part of it. Like, that's what they want. Yeah, this is what they want. And this is our, and also in the subsequent slide, you will see why, I mean, uh, why this, uh, this is the case. Okay, so although you are going to see this uh, later on with Hussam, I just wanted to show you the kind of uh, uh, user interface that you are going to be faced when you go to uh, Ryan. So this particular review is uh, based on the, uh, for 19, the COVID-19 open research data set that I mentioned before on the Allen Institute for AI and other uh, talks. So what we did, so we took that data set and we put it inside uh, Ryan as a what we call a public review. So anyone, if you go to, if you log into Ryan and you go to the uh, last tab, which is other reviews, you'll see that uh, review. So what we wanted is to make, make it easy for our users to come and uh, uh, use this uh, data set. So they will come to here and then uh, take this data set, export it to their uh, local machine, and then create a new review with this uh, the same data. Sam will uh, tell you more about this uh, later. Just to give you a brief, I mean, at least you see how this uh, thing looks like before we go uh, through this. So now I'll go to maybe a, a, a little bit technical in terms of giving you uh, uh, what is behind Ryan in terms of the architecture. I won't go in, into details. I'll mention also about the machine learning algorithm. And I'll give you some numbers. Something that I, uh, I although I mentioned that uh, Ryan is, uh, is uh, mainly working in a group of people, a collaborator, and then being able to answer specific questions. But uh, what I have noticed before, in fact, I use it myself as well, is that even if you are a single uh, person, you just have something in mind, okay? You have a, a question that is, uh, you're scratching your head. So what's going on with a specific topic? You can quickly go to uh, your database, like if you're doing bi uh, biomedical stuff, uh, you go to BAMED or you go to Web of Science or any of those uh, data, uh, data sets, uh, database. You bring in all the literature and then you put it inside Ryan and quickly, if you look like, like uh, sorry, a, a user interface like this, you go to Ryan and give you, ah, this is what's uh, the topic. And then you can quickly uh, uh, skim through your uh, review or to your uh, articles that you have brought to Ryan and give you a quick understanding of uh, what's going on in, for your specific question or uh, topic. So we have seen people using Ryan not necessarily to, like uh, in a very formal way, like uh, having a question and trying to answer it, the question, doing the review and the writing, uh, writing the document or writing the report. But also to just quickly uh, understand what's going on for a specific uh, topic. Let me go back to. So this is the high architecture. So it's maybe for you, some of you, it's not really relevant. It's just to say this building a, a system for 58,000 uh, users is not an easy uh, enterprise. 
So uh, this is a fully uh, microservice-based architecture and dockerized, and it's hosted on, on the cloud. And there are many, uh, I won't go into the details, but it just to say, it, <laughs> the idea here is that it's a, it's a bit of a complex uh, architecture that is behind Ryan to make it uh, work. Let me talk a little bit, delve a little bit on the, uh, since this is an AI-oriented uh, uh, lecture or series, so I want to tell you uh, one of the algorithms that we use in Ryan, which is extremely important, which is the Ryan uh, rating system. This is, I mean, this is a, a very simple uh, algorithm, but it's quite uh, useful. So basically, you are the reviewer, you are the human reviewer. So what you do, you go to Ryan and you upload your data and you start labeling. You say this is relevant, this is not, they exclude this and include this and so on, so on. multiple, multiple uh, citations. Once you are done, we use this uh, information or this uh, training data to, le to uh, learn a model, okay? To learn a model, Let this relevance ranking model, okay? This model, based on what you just did, is basically saying this is relevant, this is not relevant, Try to understand, uh, uh, be the model that can answer this question. Given an unlabeled, cit uh, unlabeled citation, is it possible to say if it is relevant or not? Okay. Now, you say this, uh, like uh, you say, okay, five of these citations are relevant and then 50 of them are not. Okay. Now the system will go, build the model based on your uh, label, and then take those uh, citations that don't have a label, meaning that you didn't decide if they are relevant or not, Take them and tell you, okay, most likely this should be included, and the most less likely this should be. We, at the beginning, we wanted to just do a classifier, which is basically say, telling you, you should include, include this, or these are irrelevant, or you should exclude this, and these are not relevant. But we figure out that it will be easier if we do a ranking. And we use a five star uh, uh, system. Look, I mean, you have seen if you, uh, you have shopped on uh, online sh uh, shopping. A lot of places they use this kind of uh, uh, way of showing uh, how important something is or how relevant something is. So basically here, instead of telling you you should include this or exclude them, so we rank them based on the relevance and the, most, the more greener, the more green stars, the more likely you should include uh, this uh, citation. And the less, I mean, less red, or sorry, the more red stars, the less likely you should include it. In terms of the actual model that we use, we use SVM, the support vector machine, is a known uh, algorithm for uh, classification. In terms of futures, we just use unigram bigram of titles and abstracts. We also use uh, medical subject headings, mesh terms. We did use those because most of our users are from the medical dom domain, but we could use any other uh, uh, system that can give us, uh, give us topics that we can use for classification. And our classifier is a cost sensitive in the sense that we favor inclusion decision because we want to make sure that we don't miss anything. Recall is quite important in, uh, uh, in Ryan in the sense that you don't, you don't want to miss important uh, studies. This is how it looks like on Ryan. So basically you uh, run the rating system and then the articles that can be, uh, they will be, you can sort them through the rating columns. And the more green stars are said, we suggest articles should be included, and the more red stars suggest that articles should not be included or should be excluded. This is how it looks like on uh, Ryan. Am I doing in time, uh, San Sanjay? Yeah, you have uh, maybe five, ten minutes, maybe. Okay. I think but, I but should be fine. There, there are a couple of questions coming, which I think maybe is a good time to answer. One was, you know, the Core 19 data set that you use from, um, you know, the Allen Institute. Is that set updated regularly, or it was like frozen and you know one time they created a data set and then? A yeah, good question. So basically, uh, these people are doing a good job in the sense that they uh, every Saturday they update the the, the data set, and then what we do if uh, I don't know which version I have shown here, but this should be uh, yeah this should be the latest version, the last Saturday. So each Saturday in the morning, this is the first thing I do. I go and check the new data set and make sure it's uh, on Ryan. So you can use it for your uh, review. So we do update, uh, they do update and uh, we make sure that we have the latest update uh, in Ryan that you can use for review. Just uh, uh, maybe I should clarify as well this. So th 
Why we put it here in Ryan for uh, is to make it easier for you to create your own review in Ryan. The problem we we encountered is that the data they provide is not compatible in Ryan, and making sure that it's compatible, it's not easy. We had to write our own script, so it takes the data from uh, Accord 19 and transform it into a format that Ryan uh, understands, and then we put in Ryan. For you as a, a user of Ryan, what you are going to do, you log into Ryan, you go to uh, all the reviews, and then you will find this review, and then you say export. You click on export here. You export it either all or part of it, depending on what you are doing. And then you get, once you get the file from my end, you can go and create a review. Hassan will explain how you do that. Okay, so this is just for the, uh, there was another question. Uh, uh, yeah, so there was another, another question about, you know, what, I mean, you briefly mentioned this, but, uh, you know, what ML algorithms are you using at the back end of Ryan? Right. So right. maybe uh, you already mentioned recommendation algorithms, right? right? So this, this is the main algorithm. So the recommendation, this is extremely important algorithm because the idea here, this is, this is the idea. So, so you're, it's all about reducing the time it takes you to go through all of this. And uh, the way we looked at it, so, so there is, of course, the interface. I mean, there, there are those visual cues. But also we have uh, a machine learning that will quickly recommend or suggest to you what to, uh, 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 what to include, what to uh, exclude. And we have shown, based on uh, our experiment, that it can save you uh, up to 50% of your time. So instead, instead of spending like 10 hours, you are going to spend five hours on average. Although we have seen, depending on them, how your uh, review is, how your uh, studies are, that you can save much, much more uh, time just because of the uh, suggestion that you get from the machine learning algorithm. Uh, I, uh, the, yeah, okay, there is good. another, sorry, go ahead, uh, Sanjay. No, that's good, I think you can. Yeah, of course, uh, we didn't stay there, so we wanted to, uh, we come up with a new algorithm, which is a more comprehensive algorithm than the one that we have in Ryan. It's a, an ensemble-based uh, method, so it takes a multiple uh, classifier and ensemble them. So it's uh, like, a, they, I get, we get a vote on the most likely things to include and the less likely uh, things to exclude. This is in this paper that you see at the bottom. It's on archive. But uh, we didn't have time yet to uh, uh, deploy it into Ryan. But just to give you the importance of using, uh, I mean, including machine learning algorithm in helping in the decision making. Something that I maybe I should mention as well is that in this, we we took the decision not to let the algorithm and self make that uh, the final uh, decision what should be included in excluded. So we uh, the way we are using machine learning is mostly as a. a help you make those, uh, those uh, decisions, not to replace the human. Although this is something that a lot of people are discussing, is how can we, uh, some of, for the, some of the steps that you have to go through in the systematic or other types of reviews, how can you replace uh, the human with a machine? Or maybe you can have a human and a machine, so basically you have two reviewers, one of the reviewers is a machine, and the other reviewer is a, is a human, and then you just, uh, combine the two and uh, try to figure out the best uh, decision. So there are other algorithms, machine learning algorithms that are we use in Ryan. So one of them is for deduplication of uh, articles. This is a logistic, uh, regular logistic regression. I won't go into it through the details. So this is an algorithm that we did not develop this algorithm, so we are working on uh, including our own one. So this is a, there is, we have a deep learning based uh, deduplication algorithm that we are trying to put inside Ryan. That we published last year, and it's one of the best algorithms right now for uh, publishing the top uh, database uh, conference. It's one of the best uh, uh, al uh, algorithms for deduplication. Deduplication is a very simple problem because you are getting articles from multiple places, and many times they don't look really the same, but they are the same. And then you have it's not easy to figure out if they are the same. So the, we do topic extraction. We use this uh, known extractor, MOI uh, extractor. So we use also a probabilistic. Uh, model for uh, detecting uh, natural language, so because we want to detect uh, if, the, if it is in English or other languages. And we also do uh, loca location extraction using the Stanford NER. Okay, then quickly I'll go through some numbers, some evaluation, and then I'll end with this. So does it work? So this question is that does really uh, Ryan work? So we're glad we did, we did our own uh, 
experiment, of course, we did our own evaluation and we know that Ryan works, but all the people independently from our team went uh, ahead and did the, 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 uh, did the job for us. So basically, the, the, there was this uh, study in 2017 of Sweden that shows that you can save uh, around 50% of time by just using uh, uh, Ryan. There was another uh, study, uh, sorry, before I, uh, I met, and this is, is some more or less uh, uh, similar to what we get from our survey. So we asked the people, so how much, how can you estimate the time saving that is affordable using Ryan compared to other tools or min that you have used before? We got 600, more than 600 responses, and you see uh, the, uh, the breakdown in terms of percentage, how much uh, uh, time saving. Interestingly, we got even people saying that around 20% of people said that they, they, it can save them more than 75%, which is impressive. But uh, a third of them said that it's with between 50 and 75%, and the rest between the... Uh, if you average uh, the whole thing, you get like 50 to 60% uh, time saving. And something that came uh, in January this year, which we are we're very glad with, is there was a study by a, a bunch of researchers from uh, Cambridge, I believe, and it is published in BMC Medical Research Methodology uh, Journal. And what they did, they took 60 uh, tools that you can use for uh, screening, okay, for the systematic review, for t title and abstract screening in systematic review. So they took around 60, and then they eliminated the, the most of them. They kept 15 based on uh, some uh, features they had. And guess what? We are number one. Okay, with another uh, system called COVID. But we are very glad to see. And on the bottom on the left, you see uh, Ryan is uh, number one in terms of the uh, weighted feature analysis score. So we are doing extremely well compared to other systems. At the bottom, there is a, this traffic light diagram of software features. So they, they looked at different categories, economics, setup, screening support, process management, reference management, workflow, screening features, and security. And of course, you want to have a lot of greens, which we do. Uh, we have a few oranges. We have, I think, we have three reds and only one uh, white, which is not applicable. And looking at those features specifically, this is something we can do easily. We can have it all green. It's just it's, uh, it's a matter of time for the, for us to do it. But we are very glad that we are number one uh, system in the world in terms of uh, systematic view and uh, title and abstract screening. Just give you some numbers. So we are, as, a, as we say, speak, we are, I think it's almost 59,000 registered users. These are registered users that have confirmed their account. And we get like uh, around almost 3,000 uh, daily active users, thousands of reviews, millions of articles, millions of decisions, millions of labels. And uh, we are glad that the paper that we have published in 2016 talking about Ryan got like more than 800 citations. Huge. And we hope to get to 1,000 in very soon. At the bottom, these are uh, our users are very, very active in terms of uh, uh, using Ryan for uh, COVID-19 related research. Of course, I cannot disclose what they are doing, and I'm not supposed to even see it. But uh, we know, talking to our uh, users, we have hundreds of such uh, reviews going on in Ryan. So people are very, very keen to uh, work on COVID-19, and they know that Ryan is the tool to use when it comes to reviewing a large number of articles. At the bottom, uh, these are just examples because they are publicly available. There was one on, uh, 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 two of them I mentioned in the beginning. And the last one I didn't mention about the uh, persistent virus shading in feces and so on and so forth. Just not, I put a star because these are not peer reviewed, these are on archives. But I, 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 I hope in a couple of months, uh, most likely this uh, uh, two reviews will be published in uh, a peer reviewed uh, journal. And uh, before finishing, this is uh, some testimonials. So we get a lot, a lot, a lot of kudos from our users, mostly that this system is amazing, the system is fabulous, it saves a lot of time, and so on and so forth. I won't go reading all of them. If you want to read more, so you just do, you go to Ryan and slash testimonials, and you see many, many more people, uh, happy users who are, who are very, very extremely uh, happy with the, uh, Ryan. So these are just some references uh, if you want to uh, uh, learn more about uh, Ryan. Uh, I encourage you to read the, read the first paper, uh, uh, which is about the, explaining the system. Uh, but if you want the actual uh, citation, just go to Ryan's site, slash site.
In summary, if you have a question, five question that you want to answer, it's not about reading one article or two articles. It doesn't work that way. So if you want to do a rigorous uh, uh, research, a rigorous uh, analysis, if you want to do an evidence-based analysis, you have to sift through hundreds if not thousands of scientific articles. And you need a tool like Ryan to help you to, this, uh, to do that. If you just go and read one or two, and this is why we, have, we see a lot of bogus uh, science these days, is that people limit their uh, conclusion, limit their uh, statement on very a narrow number of, uh, of uh, studies. You have to ask your question, look for all relevant uh, uh, studies and go through them. And Ryan will help you a lot in this process. Just some uh, to end this, uh, my, this part of the talk, the main success factor that made this uh, system work and be successful, so you have to work with domain experts, people who understand uh, the domain, the systematic review domain. You have to follow good design practice. You have to use machine learning, so if you want to save time, and you have to listen to your uh, users. Thank you. Thank you, Murad. Uh, so while Hussam uh, you know, comes on board, so there was one question about uh, how to deal with non-English articles. Do you actually remove them, or it's up to, up to, up to the reviewer? No, you uh, don't do uh, anything with the, uh, with the being in English or Arabic or anything. You just see them there. So you, it's your decision if you want to keep them or not. Okay, there's a, a, let's say Ryan is a language agnostic. He doesn't really care about the language, of course. We didn't do much testing, I'll be honest. We didn't do much testing in terms of the algorithm when it comes if you are using a different language. This is the only thing that we didn't do. So we, although, to be honest, I have seen uh, reviews that are all Chinese. Okay, they only use Chinese uh, article. There are review, they use Portuguese uh, article, but I'll be honest also that most of the uh, studies that people have, are bringing to Ryan are in, uh, in uh, English, but it doesn't really matter. And of course, you know, Ryan is used by, you know, at one time you mentioned it's being used widely in Scandinavian countries, right? In Sweden. Yeah, of course. yeah. yeah. But, uh, uh, I didn't give the uh, uh, breakdown, but in terms of uh, users, we have, most of our users are from the US, but we also have a lot of users from uh, Scandinavian countries, mostly Sweden, Norway. Uh, we have uh, people from Germany, uh, France, and Italy. We have a lot of users from Brazil and India. So these are the, like the main, uh, the main uh, uh, part of the work. Thank user. you very much, Moran. Uh, uh, Hossan, do you want to come on? You want to uh, give a demo now? Uh, good morning, everybody. Um, Thanks, Murad, for giving this uh, presentation on uh, Ryan. Uh, you did a good job. You made my job uh, very easy now. Um, I hope uh, the audience are excited now to see uh, Ryan and how it works. And thank you, thank you all for attending. Um, I'm going to give um, a demo now for uh, Ryan and uh, the mobile app, both the web and mobile. Uh, let me share my screen. Um, So, um, so uh, as uh, as Murad uh, mentioned, uh, any researcher who uh, wants to do some literature review or some wants to uh, screen some uh, references, the first thing he goes to some database online, and then he uh, types in some search keywords. I just prepared these keywords uh, for uh, the COVID nineteen uh, epidemic or pandemic, uh, then when you search for them, you're presented with uh, like thousands and maybe hundreds of thousands of results. Uh, and then uh, you just go and then uh, read them one by one. And then if you need more information, you just click and see the, the links. Uh, if you want to get them in any reference manager, you uh, export them 
and then uh, again you you only have to just uh, manually uh, sift through them so uh, this has proven to be uh, tedious um, so this is one example so uh, one more related example uh, also as Murad mentioned there is the cord 19 uh, data set so these are uh, curated data set for COVID-19 uh, usually uh, I mean they updated every week uh, and then they have now more than 57,000 articles. Uh, so uh, you would download from here and then you would import them in some reference manager or something like Ryan to, uh, to read them. Um, so as you can see, it's very difficult to, uh, to sift all of these things. So here is where Ryan comes to rescue. Uh, I will go to uh, Google and search for Ryan. So uh, you don't have to memorize the, the link, you just you get it in the first uh, hit. So this is ryan.qsri.org. This is our uh, system. You just click here. Okay. So uh, we have uh, prepared this uh, review uh, in public so that people can uh, use it to do COVID-19 related uh, research. Uh, from this homepage, you can also uh, download the mobile apps. And then, if you publish a paper uh, using Ryan, yeah, it's great that you cite us. And then, this is what our people are saying. There's a quick video demo on Ryan. Okay. So, I will, uh, you can sign up for free. It's currently free for everyone with no limitations. Uh, I will just sign in. I have an account with my email address. And then, just sign in. Okay, so this is the first screen that you see uh, in Ryan. So um, I have no reviews as of the moment. These are reviews that I create, and these are reviews that I've been invited to, and these are reviews that I've been invited to as a translator, and then these are the public reviews. So uh, as you can see, there are two public reviews. So uh, one of them is the all you, all of you can see it. So which is the COVID nineteen open research, which is more than fifty thousand fifty seven thousand articles. Um, so, uh, it's owned by Murad, there is no one else uh, invited, but everyone can see it as read only. So, if you go to it, this is how the review looks like in, uh, in Ryan. So, these 57,000 articles, you can see them as, I mean, these are the, the, the titles. This is a huge table, okay, you can scroll uh, indefinitely to this table. You can see uh, the title, the abstract, and you see also the authors, you can sort by date, you can sort by title, title, author, authors. And then you can, you can also notice that some terms are highlighted. These are also, uh, these are highlights that we uh, have prepared uh, from the left. These are the, the filters. So as you see, uh, some keywords were prepared by the owner of the review, like source, antibody, MERS, plasma, which are closely related to the topic of this uh, review. We'll see shortly how to create our review and put our own highlights. Um, so you just go through this, okay? And as a viewer, you just, the only thing you can do is just to uh, see the articles. Uh, to start screening, you have to have, I mean, been invited to a review as a contributor or uh, as an owner. Uh, but you can export everything from here, okay? So uh, you can work on your own uh, review. What I will do now is that I will uh, filter by uh, the year. So all of these are, are different filters. Uh, duplicates, it also, Ryan helps you in uh, resolving the duplicates. Uh, it will run an algorithm and it will suggest some duplicates for you and you have to agree either yes or no. Uh, and these are the screening. If you have uploaded multiple files, they will appear here. These are the keywords, okay? So what I will do now, I will uh, work on a subset of this review by exporting the 2020 uh, uh, articles from here. So um, you can click here anytime, okay, to uh, get this uh, filtered. Just a second. So for example, okay, I'm filtering 2021. These are articles that, ha that have not been published yet. These are preprints. That's why they show here as 2021. Um, so 
when I click on uh, any other year, okay. There's a lag on the screen, yeah. So here are the 8,103 uh, articles, unique articles. And we say unique because some, if you uploaded exact matches, an article that appears exactly the same in two files or in the same file, it will be detected as an exact match and it will not show here. It will just report uh, the unique articles, but it will show you if there are exact matches here. Um, so uh, I will uh, go ahead and export this subset. Okay, I don't want to export everything. I will export only a thousand. And these are the different formats that you can export in some options. Okay, then I click export. So uh, you will receive an email with the link. I have already downloaded this file. Uh, so uh, what I will do now is that I will go to all reviews. Okay, I'll create my first review. I'll call it. Call it nineteen. Port nineteen data set twenty twenty only. Okay, and I will. Create my review. So the first thing to do in, uh, in when you create a review is to add files. So you have either two ways to uh, input. Okay. Let's try to be slow. Um, so um, yeah, so there are two ways to uh, input articles into Rayan. So uh, the first one is to upload your, uh, your own searches. And of course, you've seen that this data set contained uh, like 57,000 articles. You'd, uh, I mean, uh, normally get these articles, either you search yourself and you have to be very careful with the keywords so that you don't get uh, a lot of unneeded results uh, or you go to the li librarian in university or research center or whatever, and then they are, uh, I mean, specialized and know how to search and get you uh the relevant articles uh, so the relevancy the relevancy is very important so that you bring down the number of articles you you have but i mean whatever you do you'll always get thousands maybe hundreds of thousands that you need to uh, stream uh, the other way is to uh, do a topic search you can search directly in popmet from here we'll give you only a sample and normally you would go to popmet itself and then get the articles and upload it here um if I, uh, I am to uh, upload the files here, before uploading, we also give you some, uh, if you're migrating from another system or if you're exporting from another system, on the right, you can see uh, these are different formats that Ryan accepts. You have EndNote, RefMan, RIS, VipTech, CSV, PubMed, Web of Science. Uh, so there are also samples so that you can see how they uh, look like, just to make sure that they would work when you upload them. Uh, and you can combine them into uh, zip files or gz files. Uh, these are also some other guides on how to, uh, let's say, you export from EndNote. So um, this will give you screenshots for on how to get articles out of this software. So, for example, I have a library on EndNote. I click on export. I choose the format, and then I select the file and save. So this file. I mean, the same for all the, the guides here. Every, I've prepared some screenshots for popular software. Uh, and then finally, when you have the file in one of these formats, you would select it from here. I prepared this file, which contains um, 8K uh, articles, 8,000 articles. It's open. Now it's uploading to Ryan. And not only uploading, it's also processing. All right. So I have uploaded this uh, file. It has finished processing on Ryan. I'll continue. Then I see the same screen that we saw before, but only for this subset. Okay. Can you see it? Yeah, we see the with the title. Yeah, now we see it. Yes. It's coming. Now it's better than before, by the way. Okay. So, um, so as you see, this is the, the same view that I've seen before, but it's only for this subset. Uh, and now I have more buttons because this is my own review now. If I go back to all reviews, I'll see this article in my uh, review list. If 
it's, uh, it's created today with this title and it contains this amount of articles. Okay, I'll see it again. So now I have full control on this uh, data set. Uh, the first thing to note here is that uh, these are 8,000 years, but you can filter them from the left. For example, uh, and as you can see, it has detected some duplicates for me. So the first thing is I want to highlight is the keywords. So there are 250 uh, articles that are highlighted, have this uh, keyword, which is compared with. So these are system, uh, system keywords that are, uh, I mean, uh, initialized with Ryan. But, uh, these keywords help uh, users to uh, get through quickly through systematic reviews and randomized control trials. This is based on a study uh, done uh, in, in base, uh, I mean, like three, four years ago, that these keywords uh, helps help uh, users to uh, get quickly to the article. But you're free to delete any of these or add your own. So, for example, uh, placebo. If I click on placebo, I can see everything that has placebo. And these are keywords for include that will probably help me to uh, include the article. So let's let's uh, I mean. Uh, uh, remember again that my uh, my main goal in uh, Ryan is screening, and uh, screening means you want to filter down uh, a huge data set to uh, maybe tens or hundreds of uh, articles that I want to focus on to do my meta analysis on. So uh, basically, you will do uh, two things: either include or exclude for the articles. So we'll see this shortly, and these keywords will help you get through the articles. So I can see the green ones. Are the keywords for include as you can see i can combine multiples of these rct randomized control trials there are four of these okay and the second set that we can filter with is the keywords for exclude let's say uh, in vitro okay or animals so i see the combined number of these uh, things yeah, it's still delayed uh, so maybe just give it some time so i don't know why we're having this I'll just try to be slow. Uh, only thing in hand. Um, so uh, now I'm explaining the keywords for exclude, uh, where uh, they will be highlighted in red. So I I know that probably I will have to exclude this. Okay. We see that. What we see what's highlighted in red. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I can filter on in a lot of things like the topics. We, I mean, Ryan detects the topics in uh, in the articles uh, based on a, a trained model for uh, medical subject headings. These are medical terms. It's a popular ontology for medical terms. It's called MeSH. Uh, so Ryan is pre-trained with this to extract the important uh, keywords or topics. So, for example, these outbreaks, disease outbreaks. I mean, obviously, because this is related on COVID-19. Uh, so uh, there are like 608 articles that have this keyword uh, so this uh, you can focus on this uh, you can uh, filter by the language that's uh, that we detect we also detect the language so uh, i mean some people ask uh, what do you do for non-english articles so uh, we have a language detection where we detect them and then we offer a uh, translation uh, it's manual translation so you have to invite someone or you input the translation and then you see it in Ryan. Uh, the journal, the authors, okay, and so on. So all the facets that you normally see in reference managers or and even more using machine learning, you'd see here. Um, so uh, the next thing to do, um, uh, there is also, if you want to uh, search inside your articles with any arbitrary keyword like uh, COVID, okay, so this will also search, and then you can combine any of these things, so you can search, at the same time you can also filter by keywords, okay, and so on. Uh, now, uh, so, Hossam, may I ask uh, like a slightly higher level question? So, uh, you know, it allows you to filter with keywords, so of course you, can, you could use um, the Google Scholar to do some filtering, you know. So, what is the key thing that Ryan is providing? Is it the tagging that uh, you know you create your own tags for screening, or? Yeah. So uh, I'm now uh, 
walking through uh, just in, uh, I mean uh, navigating your uh, review so uh, after shortly I will talk about how you tag your articles and then after tagging some of them you will see that the machine learning will kick off and then uh, help you in uh, identifying more uh, similar uh, articles but for now I'm just explaining how to navigate the articles in Ryan uh, I've already uh, I mean uh, Explain things that are, are not found in, uh, in other uh, databases like, uh, I mean, the topics, the, the language, the thing, all of these are integrated in, uh, in, in your database. Um, so uh, what you would uh, ideally do is that you will go ahead and do inclusions and exclusions. You tag your, uh, your articles. Uh, but before doing that, I have noticed that uh, Ryan detected uh, some duplicates for me. If you look at the top left, there is this box unresolved duplicates. I know that uh, Ryan has detected that there are like 442 uh, articles that look uh, like duplicates. They might be duplicates, they might be not. So uh, if you click on any of these uh, articles, like this one, for example, okay, you'll see that there is a button here, resolve duplicate. So uh, I would like to expand this view. And then if you click on resolve duplicate button, will tell you it will expand all the duplicates in this uh, review so now there, are, there is a cluster of two uh, articles that Ryan thinks with confidence of 90% they are duplicates so uh, what you would do as a reviewer is that you would first think before screening the articles you want to resolve all the duplicates so that you don't do duplicate work and then in a typical systematic review uh, process uh, you would need to report duplicates I don't know how to fix it but uh, you still the, there is still a lag between what we see and what you say yeah yeah I mean uh, maybe, maybe what you can do now is perhaps just uh, maybe summarize uh, Hossam that's okay we don't have to finish the uh, I suggest that you know what we do is we Sorry, uh, take take some questions if there are any exactly. from the audience I think uh and uh, from the attendees so uh but but i think the the ryan tutorial is available on on uh in other places right it's on youtube or something right, yeah. right. yes so, so i think uh that should be okay so so maybe uh, we, you know i can ask a few questions Barat, uh, in general uh so uh how many people are actually using uh, ryan now for covid do you i, I thought you mentioned I about mean, uh, uh... I mean, we have more than 200 pro projects on COVID-19 in, uh, in, uh, in Iran. Right, so, so over 200 projects on that. And, uh, and of course, as, uh, uh, you know, as, as you mentioned, you know, this can be used for not just medical, for, but for also economic, you know, economical impact. Right. Do you know if some of that is being done or is primarily for medical? We don't know. We cannot share this information. Oh, okay, I see. I see. Yeah. So, so the other thing is that uh, how about uh, um, the you know the the fact that uh, uh, you know how when, when you did your studies and your sort of evaluation, um, what is the thing that really distinguishes Ryan from say the other other tools out there? Of course, you know you said in the ranking you're, you're way up. There was Covidence, which is also there. Is it, what is the clincher for Ryan? Is it the interface or is it the screening? Is it the machine learning? Or? Uh, based on our uh, surveys and uh, the different uh, feedback we get from our users. So it's the interface because it's, uh, it's quite, uh, let's say user friendly and simple. It's quite simple. I mean, there is no, this is the kind of thing you can, you would expect see in this kind of uh, work so there is very simple you have a left panel for the different uh, filters and then you have your list where you work right uh, the other thing that people liked a lot is the uh, of course the machine learning aspect which is the suggestion that you get and many people found them uh, very useful because in, they can quickly uh, understand what they should uh, exclude and what they should include in fact what I, I believe what we have seen is that people use it to eliminate more than to include. So sometimes it, if we tell you something you should exclude, most likely you should exclude. Okay? Maybe you, so you spend, it's a, it's a, the cognitive uh, 
uh, cost, if you will, of going through this. So if you go to the bottom of the list, which is the reddish uh, uh, with the more red star, you can move quickly. I mean, you can take a, I mean, you can select a bunch and just say exclude, and you should be fine. Okay. When it comes to the, uh, the, the top of the list where you have the green, you have to be careful, right? Because you, you make sure that whatever you, sorry, whatever you include is uh, really relevant to your study. But people, of course, the collaboration is extremely, extremely important. Another uh, thing that we have done that we couldn't uh, show you is that uh, the, there is this uh, concept of blindness and uh, make sure that, uh, making sure that if we are working together as a group, or multiple uh, two or multiple people, we have to make sure that uh, uh, we don't influence each other. So one of the things we did is uh, we introduced this concept of uh, blinding. So basically, uh, if the blind mode is uh, on, whatever you do cannot be seen by the other people. So if you put a label or if you decide that something should be included or excluded, then the, your collaborator cannot see it. And people are very, uh, they really like this uh, uh, feature when you work with a group of people. Right. And then you have seen the, you can go to that paper that I shared before, the, this study from Cambridge, if you, so you, you see exactly for your eyes. By, uh, an evaluation done by other people to tell you exactly why we are number one. And, and maybe Hassam and Murad, this general question, because you know right now you have to, um, take a, you know, point to a database or collect a bunch of articles like COD-19. Uh, but is there a way where it could automatically go and, you know, the, the, there's been such a tsunami of information. Can you actually, you know, given some keywords, sort of farm out to different databases and try to collect that information mm -hmm. in some sense automatically and then? Yeah, you can search in PubMed from Ryan, but it won't automatically go and collect articles for you. Uh, because this is a curated uh, review. I mean, you have to have full control on what you see in, uh, in your uh, review. Uh, but we have seen that most people do their searches in uh, other databases uh, through librarians or uh, search committees, and then they upload the results to uh, Ryan. I see. Uh, uh, although there, uh, there is another, uh, actually, there is another aspect. The, uh, you, you, we can still do that. But it's a little bit challenging technically, and then it may be costly in terms of the computing infrastructure that you have to have in place to support this kind of things. So of course, the other thing is that it, it, always when you do um, uh, automa you try to automatically get things, it's, it's not straightforward. I mean, Google Scholar, for example, they do a good job, but they have a huge uh, infrastructure to uh, get to those, all those articles. However, the one thing, for example, they very, they don't allow you to do anything almost. It's just for the eyes. It's not meant for automatic uh, uh, tools. You cannot uh, send a, a robot there and try to get the data. So they won't allow you. So in fact, even to upload articles, you cannot <laughs> upload a bunch of articles at once. You have to do it one by one, which is very annoying, but this is how they do it. And uh, so it's possible. However, the technical uh, challenges are quite uh, daunting. So, and we, as uh, Hussein mentioned, that. We have seen a lot of people working with the librarian they, and they go to different databases. They make sure that the, their set is curated. So they go and search and then get the data and uh, upload it to IAN. Well, here's a specific question from an attendee. Uh, I'm interested to know the basis of exclusion or inclusion. Does your system evaluate the quality of the article or the exclusion inclusion? Uh, is it based on the title of the article? So what is your exclusion inclusion based on? No, uh, so, okay. This is a very good question. So usually, uh, we, uh, maybe I should have mentioned this. Usually when you are uh, working on a review, so you come up with a set of uh, uh, criteria. So you sit down with your group or by yourself, depending on how are you working, and you say, so for this study, okay, I'm interested to, uh, on uh, uh, references or citation that have this age uh, range. I am just interested in young people. I'm just interested in this particular outcome, like the temperature or uh, whatever, the breathing or whatever. So you come up with the inclusion criteria. So it's a list of uh, criteria that you have to come out with before starting the process. Once you have this criteria, and then you go and do the, the include exclude. So we don't do any uh, 
uh, any uh, uh, specific things in terms of uh, linking those criteria to the way you work. So basically, whatever you exclude will be excluded and whatever you include will be uh, included. And also the machine learning is agnostic to those. If you look at it, the machine learning is that trying to uh, figure out this latent knowledge. There is a latent knowledge. The knowledge latent that we don't see, that the algorithm doesn't see, is those criteria that you have written down in your uh, piece of uh, paper or in your uh, protocol. Okay? So based on those criteria, you make those decisions. And somehow, the machine learning algorithm try to discover those uh, criteria and then give uh, uh, and then uh, interpret them in a way in a model so it can do the classification. Of course, there, the issue is that there is no direct way so we can take those criteria. This is something I wanted to work on with. I, I didn't do anything on it, but the idea would be if you if you can come up with a language or a way, simple way that you can write those criteria, and then we take those uh, uh, criteria and, and turn them into a machine learning model. But this is something that could be done. I don't know if it, sorry, this content that should be explored. I don't know if it's uh, doable. Good. Well, thank you very much, Murad. Thank you, Hassan, very much. So I think this is a uh, good place to conclude the lecture, uh, and hopefully you liked it. And I think uh, uh, if I, I may sort of remind you, on Monday there will be uh, another lecture on managing health services uh, during a pandemic, which will be given by. Uh, uh, Dr. Faisal Farooq, who has a lot of experience about dealing with uh, medical uh, and health related research. So, uh, yeah, so thank you very much, and we look forward to seeing you uh, next week.